Hi everybody, today I am going to talk about an interesting condition that too many people in this world are actually suffering from. It's otherwise called as gastric disorder or gastric symptom. The term gastritis or gastric disorder is a kind of umbrella term that encompasses various symptoms underneath it. It includes GERD, heartburn, uh, otherwise called as reflex disease, a bloating sensation when they eat something or constant burping or belching whenever they eat certain types of food they feel like their stomach is bloated uh, and so on uh, these symptoms are mostly attributed to the upper gastric disorder in this talk we'll be discussing mostly on the upper gastric disorder we are not going to discuss the lower gastric disorder which includes flat ones and then uh, uh, indigestion and so on you may wonder why as a physiotherapist i'm talking about a disease which is pertinent to the alimentary tract or the digestive tract uh, it happened to me in my clinic that uh, when I'm seeing my patients who are suffering from chronic neck pain and then upper thoracic pain, they also have uh, associated symptom of gastric. Then I thought that I have to dwell deep and I do a little bit of research in that. I found some significant association between gastric disorders and the spine problem. Uh, before I go there, let me discuss what the gastric disorder means. Uh, it's a kind of vague term. Different people explain it differently. For some people, it will be belching and bloating. For some people, it will be GERD, otherwise called as reflex disease. Some people explain it in the form of heartburn over here. And some people would say that whenever they eat certain type of foods like spicy food or peanuts or sprouts, they tend to get indigestion and bloating sensation. It's not a rule that everybody should be suffering with all the symptoms. But it is true that some people will suffer from some symptoms, if not all the symptoms. And mostly these patients will go to a gastroenterologist and they'll be subjecting themselves to various types of tests which includes even endoscopy. But more often than not, endoscopy will reveal uh, nothing in terms of significant pathology. Maybe here and there some esophageal or the gastric ulcer they may find, but there is no real cure that they can offer to these patients. Uh, these patients, when they are found with such gastric disorders, they tend to do some coping strategy which include taking small meals or avoiding certain types of food or they eat uh, two to three hours before sleep so that they don't uh, get the heartburn when they go to bed some of them will be using two or three pillows to prop their neck up so that the food content cannot come up some patients will actually take the gastric medications like proton pump inhibitors and antacids in order to suppress the acid secretion by the stomach is it a disorder which affects only the old people no it is not because i see people as young as 20s and 30s even teenage group they do suffer from these disorders and nobody knows why they are getting it what they do is just a coping strategy they are not doing any curative strategy i will take you through the physiology of how the esophages function how the valve in the esophages function how the gastric contents are allowed to come up uh, how these patients are suffering with these symptoms when they have a problem with their spine okay the esophagus has two sphincters, upper esophageal sphincter and the lower esophageal sphincter. The lower esophageal sphincter is very close to the stomach and this lower esophageal sphincter is like a circular valve which has to close when the food is getting digested by the stomach and it should open when the food is uh, going through the esophagus to the stomach. When we are eating, the lower esophageal sphincter is supposed to open so that the food what we ingest is supposed to go down to the stomach uninhibitedly. In case when the sphincter closes very hard, then food cannot go in. So our body has a clever mechanism in such a way that whenever we ingest food, the esophageal sphincter will reflexively open and allow the food to go inside. By the time when the stomach is digesting the food, the sphincter must close so that the food cannot go up to the esophagus and for this we have to have a strong closing action of the lower esophageal sphincter now let's talk about what governs the lower esophageal sphincter the lower esophageal sphincter is a functional valve and any valve has an action of closing and opening and you know that valve means it should allow an unidirectional flow that means the food what we eat must go only one direction and it is not supposed to come up. But there's a paradox here. Sometimes when there is a real uh, vomiting sensation or when the stomach is upset when we have to vomit, uh, that time the esophageal sphincter will actually open to let the gastric contents to get emptied out of your mouth. So it happens when you are actually sick, when you have a stomach upset, when 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 there is a food poisoning, then uh, there is a wise mechanism in our body that it lets the gastric contents to come out of the body. In GERD, otherwise called as gastroesophageal reflex disorder, the food what we consume uh, will not be contained by the tight esophageal wall, rather the esophageal wall will allow the gastric contents to come up because the valve is weak. It's a functional valve which has an action of closing and opening. And since it's a muscle, 
any muscle in the body must be governed by a na let's say uh, in our urinary bladder we have an external sphincter and the internal sphincter so these sphincters are the muscles governed by the pudental nerve when these nerves are at fault it let the sphincter to relax and that causes the urinary incontinence so here the problem is with the valve that let the urine to pass because of the abnormal tone which it has due to the affected nerve so any valve in the body is supposed to be closing and opening and these valves are made up of muscles circular muscles any muscle in the body needs a nerve supply without a nerve supply the muscle cannot function for example if the biceps has to contract the nerve called musculocutaneous nerve has to innervate the biceps when the nerve is at fault somewhere in the pathway or in the neck level the biceps cannot contract similarly the circular muscles in the lower esophageal sphincter is governed by the nerves what nerves is governed by the vagus nerve is governed by the greatest plancneck nerves and it is governed by the phrenic nerve now why i am talking about phrenic nerve because phrenic nerve innervates the diaphragm and diaphragmatic tone contributes 50 percentage of the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter because the diaphragm has a hole called hiatus is always called as esophageal hiatus through which the the esophagus pass through the contraction or the tone of the diaphragm is very important to reinforce the tone of the esophagus itself when the diaphragm is slack or having less tone probably the diaphragm cannot reinforce the valve of the lower esophageal sphincter and that also will let the lower esophageal sphincter to relax in gut the problem is not with the content that we eat it's the valve that is dysfunctional everybody talks about the food that they eat but nobody talks about the valve that is dysfunctional and everybody is focusing on coping strategy nobody is focusing on curative strategy apart from the diaphragm reinforcing the lower esophageal sphincter the vagus nerve which is a cranial nerve also contributes to the sphincter tone okay so the vagus nerve is arising from the cranium and it pass through the cervical vertebra and then come down and govern the lower esophageal sphincter when there's a problem with these nerves for example in conditions like forward head posture the position of the cervical spine will alter or stretch the position of the vagal nerve that in turn causes irritation of the vagus nerve which, which causes various symptoms not only gerd but also belching and bloating sensation and kind of indigestion and so on whatever test you do you will not find anything because it's more of a functional problem rather than a true anatomical problem and nobody talks about the integrity of these nerves that governs the lower esophageal sphincter unless until you don't improve the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter whatever medical treatment that you take for the reflux disease or for the constant belching and hiccups you will have no permanent relief you can only live with a coping strategy not with a curative strategy people take medicines like proton pump inhibitors and antacids and they suppress this acid secretion of the stomach who are we to tell the stomach not to secrete acid because this acid is secreted by the stomach for a reason in order to kill the bacteria which is there in the food that we eat in order to digest the food in order to break the fat this acid that is secreted in the stomach is so important for digestion absorption and assimilation if we are ingesting medicines to suppress the acid secretion of the stomach that is even more dangerous because that will end up in malnutrition a malabsorption some people's complain is in such a way that when they don't eat on time or when they delay their food they get gastric issues they get burping they get bloating sensation some people say that when they eat food excessively they get the issues the symptoms are widely different it is not having a particular pattern our body is designed to fast and feast that means we are supposed to eat whenever we want to eat when we feel hungry we can eat when you don't feel hungry we should not eat like animals they don't have a proper breakfast time they don't have a proper lunch time they eat whenever they want to eat and sometimes there is no food they don't eat we are supposed to be like that some people are so choosy and picky in terms of what they eat uh, and they think that the food is the issue that is causing the problem rather is their organ which is having the issue not the food that is having the issue so treat the organ don't treat the food my grandmother used to say this to me when i was in my late 20s this is the age when you have to eat stone and digest stone you know that's how your organ should be functioning that strongly now you see the current generation 20s and 30s they have so many issues in terms of the food that they take they take so much of medicines for the gastric issues in the natural my understanding is most of the gastric disorders ranging from gerd to bloating to burping they are all mostly an organ disorder decided by a dysfunctional nervous system that are governing these organs this nervous system includes vagus nerve greatest plancneck nerve and the phrenic nerve these are the nerves that actually govern the sphincter and the esophagus if these nerves 
are maintaining its integrity, then most of the symptoms will be abolished. The phrenic nerve is the nerve that governs the diaphragm and has a root value of C3, C4, C5. That means the nerve has to exit from the cervical level that in turn comes down and govern the diaphragm. If there is an issue with the nerve here, then you cannot give proper orders to the diaphragm. And these people are the ones who are thoracic breathers. And if they don't use the diaphragm adequately, then the diaphragmatic tone will come down. That in turn reduces the tone in the lower esophageal sphincter that slowly led these people to experience the gastric disorders, especially the GERD. Even for belching, I have been seeing people who belch almost like 500 to 1000 times in a day. Every second they tend to belch, every movement they belch, every inhalation they will be belching and it's so profound that it affects their life to the core that they cannot function at all because of this problem. When we talk about the physiology of the belching, belching is designed in order to clear all that air which is accumulated in the stomach which we unknowingly will be consuming when we eat or when we talk. But these people when they are belching, they are belching 500 times in a day that means is that that much gas is accumulated in the stomach? Not, not necessarily. Some people say that when I eat this much peanut, then they belch for the entire day. Is it like the stomach is manufacturing that much gas in the body? I don't think so because stomach cannot produce that much gas. Rather, the gas is actually coming from the lungs and the reflex is initiated by the lower esophageal sphincter and they think that uh, they have a lot of gas, lot of gas. It's not the case. Some of my other patients, they attribute their pain also is because of gastric. If they have a shoulder pain, they think it's a gastric. If they have chest pain, they think it's a gastric. One guy had a knee pain, he thought it's a gastric. Okay, so one guy had headache, he, he thought it's a gastric. Some people who get pain anywhere in the body, they attribute to gastric. No, uh, it's a word generalization because that's an easier way of justification of your pain without putting your thought process into knowing what is actually causing the pain. So this gastric is blamed for most of the pains in the body. Uh, it happens so much so that in my clinic, most of my patients with neck pain, uh, they also have associated gastric disorders. Then my interest got excited here and then I started doing a little bit of research and I have been uh, asking questions related to the gastric disorder. And the one thing which I found was people who are having neck pain or neck disorders also do have the gastric disorders and they think that the gastric disorders and the neck pain are two different entities and they need two different treatment. But eventually as I started treating them in terms of their neck problem, as they get better with their neck symptoms, their gastric symptoms also got better. Some of my patients have actually got cured of their gastric symptoms and they could eat whatever they want to eat. Uh, they can fast whenever they want to fast. They could skip their meals whenever they have to. This really surprised me and then I thought that I should I should start doing more research on that. Then I started reading the physiology of uh, physiology of all these gastric symptoms. Then I found that uh, the organ health is decided by the spine health. Then I thought that okay, uh, the nerves are the one which governs the organs and the nerves are exiting from the spine. The spine is not well, the organ cannot be well because the spine is the canal through which all the nerves will travel and exit at different different level to govern various organs. If these nerves are at fault, the gallbladder cannot function well, the liver cannot function well, the pancreas cannot function well and the esophagus cannot function well because these organs are wired. Of course they are governed by the hormones and the enzymes but whenever there is a mobility involved, whenever there is a movement involved, whenever there is a contraction involved, it needs muscle and every muscle needs certain nerve supply and such nerve supply has to come from the spine because the nerves exit from the spine. If you treat the spine well, if you treat the neck, if you treat the upper thoracic spine, probably there's a very good chance that you can come out of the gastric disorders. Um, before you get into various forms of medical treatment and then the invasive treatment, you must meet someone uh, who knows how to treat your spine so that this organ health can be restored. Now everything said and done, we know that the spine is important structure that governs the organs. How to treat the spine? I will certainly do one more video on how to maintain your spine health, what kind of uh, movements and exercises you have to do to improve your spine health so that you can indirectly govern your organ health, okay?